Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys in California. Before I begin, I'm going to give all praise. It's most high. Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge it, Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High bless this lesson this evening. He has more not understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand the events that are currently happening on the earth, so we need a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Family, in order to understand what is going on with the Gentiles, we must also we must understand the fact that the whole foundation of the Gentiles is nothing but lies. Now, something I've talked about before is how these other nations have always tried to get a jump start on the truth. They've always they they know that the Most High is about to move, so they set up groups or people in order to kind of get like a little precursor to the truth so they can try to um, maintain or uh, set up their own little version of the truth from the beginning. See, they knew that the Israelites were going to be getting, uh, going to be awakened. So they set up Ish and the land over there as Israel and make it seem as if, that was the fulfillment of prophecy. See, you know, the real Israelites are going to be restored. They're going to be awakened in the lands of their captivities. They are going to awaken, and that is the true fulfillment of prophecy. But see, since they can't replicate an awakening because their people never lost their identity, they try to get in front of this fulfillment of prophecy by setting those people up in the land or in a land and making it seem as if that was the fulfillment of scripture. See, you know, they're doing these things, but they're not proving anything. They're just saying that this was a fulfillment of scripture, but the Bible was never about them. And that's when they get rid of books. So you got to get rid of the fact that it was the Greeks that disconnected, that began the disconnection of us from our heritage. The Greeks were the ones that disconnected us from our power by making it illegal for us to follow our ways. They have to hide the fact that the Romans did the same thing, forced us all to be Romans and you can't have your own individual thought. You can't follow the Most High. You can only follow the gods of the Romans. And then the revived Roman Empire as well. Then you had the Moors and Islam, Israelites following another religion. And then eventually those those people, those um, Israelites, right, became Arabs. And now they're trying to use that whole thing with Islams and Ar Islam and Arabs to make it seem as if that's somehow fulfilling Ezekiel 38. The Gog and Magog war, it's the beginning of that. They're like, oh, well, this isn't it, but it's the beginning of that. Because they're always trying to get out ahead. Now, see, this event that happened a couple of weeks ago was a prime example of them doing the same thing. They know that the Most High is going to make them fight with one another. So what do they do? They try to get out in front of it by having supposedly Iran shoot off all of these missiles at Ish. And then Ish firing a missile back and somehow this is a fulfillment of prophecy because they're trying to control this narrative. But see, we know that the Most High is going to make them really fight. But see, they're trying to produce their next movie and make it seem as if somehow that was a fulfillment of prophecy, which it can't be a fulfillment of prophecy because, as far as biblically anyways, because the real Israelites have not been restored back to their lands. All 12 tribes have not gone back to the land. So it just shows you that when you understand that these people are constantly trying to set up a, a set up their version of prophecy before the true awakenings or the true fulfillment of prophecy, when you understand that, then it's a, it's a pattern that they're constantly doing. Just like okay, you they set up these some some of these groups, 
to say that they're the Hebrew Israelites. They put them on the corners. They have them cuss and yell and scream at everybody, right? And then they say that this is the awakening. It's only the books of the Bible. It's only the 66 books that are in the Bible. It's only the 80 books in the Bible. And if you read anything other than that, you're going off. See, again, they're trying to show you that like, this is all the awakening has to do with. The awakening only has to do with the 80 books, and that's it. Esau, 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 the white man, the white man, the white man. Concentrate on that, nothing else. All the while, the Holy Spirit said she was going to bring all things back in remembrance. She didn't say she was only going to be limited to the 66 or 80, 80 books that the Gentiles have approved. She's going to bring all things in remembrance because we had many other books that the Gentiles have hidden. But if you set up a group that says, don't look at the book of Enoch. Don't look at Jasher. Don't look at Jubilees. That plays into the hands of the Gentiles. Have them go out and, and cuss and yell and scream, which will turn people off. Again, so that if, even today, when people are talking about the, the Hebrew Israelites, they always run to these groups. Oh, well, Nate says this from IUIC, or GMS says this, right? Or this person says that, but it's only the ones that they have approved only the ones and they're always talking about those specific groups primarily they rarely talk about people who get into other books they won't even touch that information they won't prove the fact that you can't read other books i've asked for videos hey please show me where you know how was telling you only read 66 books where does it say how as you guys call jesus said you can only read 66 or 80 books and that's it and that everything is going to be in those books. See, that again shows you how the other nations have been trying to usurp the awakening. Trying to control the awakening. Trying to control the whole dynamic. But see, the Most High is going to erase, going to, going to, going to send the Holy Spirit. And she is going to raise up individuals who are going to be well-versed with the scriptures, with the 80 books, as well as many other books. You haven't seen any theologians trying to, you know, disprove all this information. You haven't seen them trying to disprove the book of Enoch. I've heard it from GMS and, oh, well, there is a book of Enoch, but that's not the right one. How the hell, what? How the hell do you know? Oh, that's not the right, that's not, that's not the book of, uh, there is a book, but that's not the right one. We can say that about all books. We can say that about the Bible as well. Because you got your new NLT version of the Bible that they have got, gone ahead and changed things so they could try to apply that to, again, their version of the fulfillment of prophecy. See, we see you. The Holy Spirit has exposed you. So we see the game plan. So it's the whole, same thing with Iran. Just say we shot off 300 missiles. Say we shot down 99% of it. Say the same things over and over again. You know, keep, keep, keep with the same things over and over again. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's just, you got your talking points, just repeat it. And then the people in, in the church will say that, oh, well, we all got together and we prayed and, and Israel was saved. That shows you that those are the chosen people. Cut them another check for $26 billion. Because if we keep blessing those people, we're going to be blessed. Yes, we've been blessed with $34 trillion of debt. We have been blessed with uh, getting $100 trillion deeper in debt every 100 days. Oh, man, what a blessing. Cut them another check. Give them another $26 billion. Give Ukraine another $60 billion. I know we don't got the money for it, but cut them checks anyway so we can keep getting these blessings. All the way until the end. But you see, we see you. We see you trying to fulfill prophecy in your own way. But we also see the fact that these prophecies are not going to be fulfilled the way you have told everyone. See, just like we talk about the Odes of Solomon, you invite many to the feast, the feast of the devil. And then when they make that covenant with you, they make you vomit out all your knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Then those, de those demons leave you, and they leave you in a zombie-like state. So therefore, whenever you hear information, if you, are, if you are 
soulless and spiritless, you will get that blank look, which is what the vast majority gets when you start talking about this truth. Like the life has been sucked out of you by these religions. And you just walk around. And it's funny because I even remember this. Like even when you start talking to people about the truth, they still try to marry the truth with the lies they've been told. Like you start telling them, like, look, man, we're the Hebrews. We're the time clock. Okay, but when's the rapture? Uh, there is not going to be a rapture. What do you mean there's not going to be? Yeah, of course. Well, okay, you can be the people, but when's the rapture? There's not going to be a rapture. Okay, well, um, okay, well, you're the people, but when's the tribulation period going to start? We've already been going through the tribulation. No, no, no. There's going to be a seven-year tribulation. In the no, no, no. When's, when's, the, when's, the, when's the trans, you know, when am I going to get a rapture so that then, you know, oh, when are they going to build the third temple so that, you know, that'll be the time when the Antichrist shows up. There is not going to be, the Antichrist has been here this whole time. No, no, no. Because see, this is what happens when you don't have any knowledge and a spirit of discernment. You can't change what you've been told. You can't bring in new information and get a new output. And that's what you see with the vast majority of these people. So that's why they can just say, well, we shot up. No, well, Iran shot off 500 rockets, 300 rockets, 1,000 rockets, whatever else. Did we see it? Did we see the damage? They say, oh, okay. Well, they said 99% of it uh, of the rockets were shot down. Okay, there was damage. Well, have you really seen the damage? They're just telling you things, but they're not really showing you anything because they're trying to get out in front of the Most High. They know that eventually the Most High is going to make them fight and destroy each other. But they don't want you to know that. So therefore, they're going to try to jump out in front of this. But ultimately, the Most High is in charge of absolutely everything. And if he says you guys are going to fight, you guys are going to fight. As much as you try to make it sound like, oh, well, we're good now. We shot a few rockets and they shot one back and now we're all good. Yeah, but that's okay. Because just like you guys try to control this awakening by putting out groups that pretty much follow along with your dogma. These guys these guys in these groups that were on the street corners yelling and screaming and acting a fool, trying to act all hard and everything else, all they did with prophecy was follow the same prophecies that they had been uh, given by the Gentiles. Have they not always been talking about the, uh, the chip that's coming, the Antichrist that's coming, the tribulation that's coming in the future? And they've, even people in the truth have ignored the fact that we've been going through a tribulation for thousands of years that has been accelerated the last 500 plus years. You see what I'm saying? Because they're still talking about everything happening in the future, which is exactly what the churches tell them. That's what the churches tell you. That's what the churches have said the whole time. And these guys have talked about almost exactly the same breakdown of scripture, breakdown of prophecy verbatim as the church. Because they want people to still Okay, well, you can be the Israelites, but as long as you follow the way we tell you that prophecy is going to happen, you're still going to be able to talk about certain things. Even people in the truth, have you heard them talk about Revelation 6 and 8 and 9 and how that links up with Columbus? Or have you heard them be quiet about that too? Just like these churches have never touched on that either. They All they can say is it's going to happen in the future. That's your opinion. That is not a fact. Just because you say it doesn't make it a fact. But it does match up perfectly with Columbus coming over here, bringing the horses, dogs of the conquest, of famine because they killed off so many people. There wasn't enough people to grow food or the fact that they couldn't grow their own food. So they went and stole it from the aboriginals. Getting that blessing of the sword and going around and using it anytime they, they wanted to. But you can tell that the Most High is taking that away from them. All they have now is smoke and mirrors. That sword would have already been used if they had it. But they don't have it anymore. So now they're stuck trying to fake it, which is exactly what they're doing. They're just faking everything right now. But like I said, you can tell. They try to jump in front of this truth and set up groups that pretty much said exactly this said exactly the same thing. Only they, the only thing that they said that was different, yeah, they got a much better understanding of the Bible. I'm not saying that they don't, they do. Okay. But when it came to breaking down prophecy, they don't do that. 
they just go with what they've been told by the Gentiles. You see that? They don't, they don't talk about that. They don't talk about different, you know, actually using the Bible to talk about what has happened to us in history. Talking about how Revelation 6, 8, 9, and 10 links up with 2nd Edges 15 and talks about the saints and how the Most High is going to turn his, turn his face, you know, back to his people and say, you guys aren't going to be killing my people anymore. But link in the fact that like Joel 2 is happening over here in America and how many people are going to be taken off the land here in the Americas. They still push the whole America just going to be destroyed by nuclear fire and that's it. That's that's a that's the same thing that the Christians say. This land is precious to the Most High. He gave it to his people. He will not allow them to destroy it. But you see them, let's, let's scroll down your feed and look at all the same thing. Oh, you know, oh, you know, they got, they're doing more drills. Another 900,000 troops and is going to drill. Oh, they're going to drill in this area. Oh, they're going to start getting ready for World War III. Oh, they're going to do an elephant walk and they're going to just, you know, take off a whole bunch of, sh of, of, of planes you know, just practice taking them off for, for bombing runs. They're just going to keep on doing that over and over again. There's nothing but fear. As if somehow they they have control. They're trying to enjoy the last little time remaining in their blessing. That's all that they're trying to do at this point. But that's not going to happen for much longer. There's too much truth out here now talking about the money situation and how bad it is. Yeah, well, you know, hey, it's all on your watch, bruh. This is all on your watch. You guys have been in charge. What makes you think the Most High is going to bless you? Because you've done such a great job. The Most High gave you talents. What did you do with those talents? It's like the parable of the talents. What did you do? Did you did you do something with it to, you know, show the Most High that you've made some kind of gain with the talents he gave you? Or did you bury it in the ground? So you guys buried your talents in this earth. That's what you guys have done. So when the Most High comes back, what have you done with the blessing he gave you? He gave you all of our blessings. He gave you our land. He gave you our position of authority. And what did you do with it? He gave you his people. What did you do with it? See, you've been too busy trying to destroy the Israelites and uh, erase their memory from the world that you squandered your blessing. You squandered your time at the top when you could have been, you know, trying to do positive things. You, you know, positive things with your blessing. You used your blessing to destroy the most highest chosen people and disconnect us from him. How do you think that is going to turn out? You have squandered it by trying to fulfill scripture in order to keep the world in the dark. You change the times, you know, so that people don't realize how close they are to the end. Just like I read in the Apocalypse of Elijah, how the whole world is going to be turning against the Antichrist. They're going to realize that they have been lied to. They're going to realize that they have been made enemies of the Most High by following you. By following Caesarea Borgia. By following your churches. Your churches have taken, usurped the authority of the Israelites. You have made it so it is illegal for us to know who we were. So therefore, you couldn't even come to us when you need um, counsel. The other nations came to the Israelites when they needed counsel. They knew to bless Israel, even when we were at the bottom. They still let us follow our ways and be connected with our power. Because they knew eventually we were going to be raised back up. And they were going to be held accountable for how they, yeah, they treated the Israelites when they were at the bottom. See, it's easy for you guys to look up to us and listen to us when we were at the top. But how is it? How are you going to react to us when we are at the bottom, when we are our lowest state? So you guys use that time, this last time, to gloat and to destroy us and to mock us and to mock our power. Always asking, where is your power at now? Well, he's here now. She's here now. The Holy Spirit is here. The Father is here. 
The Son is here. His people are here. So your breakdown of our scriptures is going to be destroyed every single time. Because that is now the order of the day. The order of the day is to destroy your breakdowns using our scriptures. Destroy your um, idea of prophecy. Expose the fact that you are just trying to fake it like you have something to do with prophecy. That is all you guys are doing. If you can't prove that Ish over there are the people, you can't even prove that that's the land where everything even happened. Just because you say scholars say, theologians agree, stuff like that, that doesn't mean anything. Because you have made a covenant with Satan. You, your theologians, your experts, all of them are all in cahoots with lying about who the Israelites are, destroying our memory from the earth, and then elevating yourselves into positions of authority. But that will continue not for much longer. As you can tell, you guys, you're just a skeleton crew as it is. You're just nothing but a body with no spirit at this point. And uh, that's exactly what the Most High is showing me. And that's what the Holy Spirit is showing me as well. She was the one that, you know, was brought to me to make us, you know, show me like, hey, look, they're just trying to get out ahead of the truth, which is what, and then there's examples of it all the time. The examples of you guys trying to be out of it and head with the awakening, even though it says we're going to wake up in the lands of our captivities. You wanted to set up groups that would only read the 66 or 80 books that you've approved. They would only break down uh, the prophecies the way you break them down. They would not go into the scriptures and look at how history fits what's been going on. Because then when you realize that, when you go to look at history and connect it with the Bible, you see that many of these prophecies that they keep saying are happening in the future have already been accomplished. And if people would not realize how close they are into the end, because they were still looking for things to happen for, uh, much further in the future. But that will not, will not work out the way that they say. So when you understand this and keep on that and now look at what they say, you're going to see it's the same things over and over again. It doesn't matter what um, religion, what harlot you, you listen to. They're all the same. None of them talk about who the real Israelites are. None of them talk about how we have been fulfilling the prophecies for the last couple thousand years. They will, none of them will talk about how the Catholic church and the Christian churches, you know, have made a deal with the devil. And they all give their um, allegiance to the churches because they have been um, to pretty much enslaving and killing the true Israelites. Those are things that they will not touch, which exposes them as to let you know who they really are. The seeds of Satan. All praise, most high Yahweh. Acknowledgement of the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge it. How is shy? Shalom.